Welcome everyone to another news. This time I start with Apple and uh, maybe I actually cut this in three pieces to see how this works. Uh, if people favor shorter news segments by topic. So starting with Apple reportedly, oh, this is also the wrong news. Starting with you've got zero day click mail uh, viruses and malware delivered to you by mail.app and mail.d here allegedly to the researchers. And so what this means is vulnerability allows remote code execution capabilities and enables attackers to remotely infect a device by sending an email that contains significant amount or consumes significant amount of memory. Vulnerability does not necessarily require large email, regular email uh, might be enough. Both vulnerabilities were triggered in the wild. Allegedly, their vulnerability can be triggered before the entire email is downloaded. Hence, the email content won't necessarily remain on the device. And vulnerability triggered on iOS 12, uh, 13, unassisted zero click attack on iOS 13 with mail application. In the background, so yeah, 2020, you're owned by receiving an email. Of course, we had this certainly a couple of times already the last decade with text message and uh, iMessage and stuff. But yeah, probably also complexity, right? I said this so often here, keep stuff stupid simple, of course, with all the HTML, uh, WebKit, WebView, there for all the HTML email. Maybe anyway, not the right place to start. Apple, first Apple said, uh, nothing to see. Um, it's not like really zero day security stuff, but later they said, they patch it, so not really sure. I think initially they also said it's just crashing and not you know, whatever. But <clears throat> your mileage may vary just that you are aware of this stuff and certainly keep it stupid simple. Maybe leave in the comments below what you think about HTML email complexity. Speaking about Apple, if your MacBook Pro, your, your latest precious um, overheats, you might be charging it from the wrong side like Seriously, recurring theme here, of course, in this in the more main channel. Um, overheating, thermal throttling, not a new thing here to the recurring subscribers, but in 2020, you're not only holding or touching, but also charging it from the wrong side. So what happens is that the USB-C power circuitry, as seen on Louis Rossman's channel, on the other side has more components there, including a thermal sensor for the thermal throttling, obviously. And so when you're charging it from, I think, the left side, where there is more of uh, this uh, circuitry on the PCB, um, it gets hotter, certainly from the charging, from the power circuitry in the Louis Rossmann's channel. And then because of the heat detection on the left side, it also throttles down the CPU, certainly, because uh, everything, including the CPU, GPU, gets hotter, overheat thermal throttles. So yeah, 2020, you are thermal throttling your precious Intel CPU in a MacBook Pro by charging it from the wrong side. So the other side, so if you plug the USB-C power, power cable to the left side, uh, you might make it overheat your yeah, left side, as I said. And so you can circumvent this by charging it from the right side if your desk setup and cable links and stuff allows you to uh, plug it in into the preferred side, the snowflake side there. and um, in, in the wrong side, yeah, 2020, you would think Apple designs make precious luxury items of uh, this. Um, anyway, special special PC flavor fame so that you can charge it from, from any charging port. But no. um, slightly wonder in previous times, MagSafe was only one port on the left, or usually. Anyway, I wonder slightly if... Um, yeah, but actually you couldn't charge it from another side in previous times. However, uh, obviously, even in previous times with the MagSafe, if you're charging your Mac, it could be more subject to thermal throttling in general. Certainly, I realized this a couple of times. And uh, so with this, of course, a kernel task here goes to like 100%. Some news reports this, like this kernel task is consuming um, so much CPU, but of course, it's most likely just idling and, and in ACPI code or power management uh, code there. So it's most likely not um, responsible for the overheating. Isn't the runaway process responsible? Can kill it. Uh, answer is uh, you can't. So yeah, just as I said, um, 
you can force quit and will come back. Really, you can force quit it. I didn't expect you can force quit a kernel task, but anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, it's just a symptom, not the cause. It's just like sleeping there, so I'm throttling. In last but not least, this week in Apple, Apple will maybe reportedly use 12 core, five nanometer ARM processors. We mentioned this already a couple of times here between the lines. I'm first of all, I'm not very impressed. Second of all, I said this before in, in many videos, a couple of times previously. I'm not sure that this will be a success story because I've seen many people um, either running Parallels, VMware, um, VirtualBox or whatever, or even run Windows natively because now Mac hardware is in business use case of whatever company issued whatever Windows deployment stuff. So I see a lot of, first of all, I'm, I'm expecting many people who are not as technical, technically, technically savvy here, um, well-educated and, and just home Joe users be disappointed that they can't like run parallels and stuff. Of course you could like QEMU software user space virtualization like run it as like not virtualized but emulated certainly pretty slow. So yeah like QEMU TCG. Um, certainly that probably just five or ten percent of the performance. Think Apple's Rosetta there of 10.6 Pro PC fame. But um, yes, yeah, certainly many people will be disappointed and those who either return it or uh, spread the word. I see the sales not improving with that. I see, foresee the market share failing from the 10, 12, whatever. It might be too less due to, yeah, can't develop like that with VMware. I wonder if, I also wonder, will this be as full featured as in a mo normal Mac for um, a normal Mac OS for being able to install normal applications, side loading it beside the App Store, or will this be a locked down version of iOS? Then I see the sales even more declining. But leave in the comments what you think. Of course, I praise the TRS in certainly over um, hyper performance uh, in power envelope much larger than an iPhone, which already is relatively high performance. But um, yeah, I see some issues with that because I think Apple in the, uh, the usual reality distortion field there in Cupertino, they might not realize how much sales they have in terms of x86 compatibility, or maybe they realize and just don't care. But um, yeah, I don't see this the biggest success story to come. That's it for Apple news. We let's split the news here and see how it works with smaller news segment and link in the comments below. How you think it may uh, like it? Maybe we should just do a very short one, like five or ten minutes every other day when I have time. But uh, we will see how we continue with this and trying to optimize here the news flow.